Uh, there are three main points I want to make in, in my remarks. Uh, the first is that the federal government faces a, a challenging set of um, uh, opportunities uh, in carrying out its uh, mandate today, in, including those that involve uh, new communications platforms. Second, I want to just drill down a little bit further on how government uh, is and, and will be using social media. And third, I want to just talk about some of the opportunities presented by open, the open government movement, uh, the open government policy, uh, both in Canada and uh, from a global perspective as well. Uh, so first, uh, let's just sort of set the table a little bit, talk about uh, challenges faced by our government, but it, this is similar to uh, governments uh, around the country and the globe. Of course, as an organization, uh, government has a job to do. Its job is to uh, deliver uh, quality programs and services to Canadians, uh, and to do that as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Uh, and in order to achieve those goals, uh, there is a constant requirement to pursue excellence in our operations. Striving for that excellence, achieving that excellence, obviously a bigger challenge than ever, uh, particularly as uh, we try to also at the same time get back to a balanced budget. Uh, we're seeing the, that debate now launched in Ontario with the Drummond Report. Uh, and as well, uh, we know that this is not just confined to government, that businesses uh, in, uh, in a competitive global marketplace uh, have to compete against the best. Same thing in government, because government has to allow society as a whole to be the best it can be as well. So those are the challenges we face together. Uh, in order to stay uh, relevant, uh, government must continue to provide Canadians with those high quality programs. But we're also living in a world where uh, citizens want more transparent and accountable government uh, and that, uh, first of all, can demonstrate that their tax dollars are being well managed. Uh, but it, as I think we've learned this week, it, it, it goes beyond that. It goes back to sort of uh, first uh, values and principles as well. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about uh, the context in, uh, in relation to the global downturn uh, that started a few years ago, the challenges that we face even today. Uh, so we do want our government to be uh, more productive. Uh, we do want to make sure that public servants uh, uh, can put forth the most effective policy options and give the most informed advice. So here's how it dovetails into uh, the technology of today. Uh, new platforms have created even more opportunities for public servants, not only political actors, but public servants, to truly engage citizens and others where they live, work, and play with more immediacy than was ever previously possible in the history of the earth. Of course, that's a, dub that's a double edged sword. It, it, there are two sides of this coin. It, that poses some challenges as well. The most obvious challenge when it comes to the public service, when it comes to government, is the culture change that has to occur if that is going to be successful. In traditional parliamentary government, our system has been based on ministerial accountability and then delegated authorities down from there. With Social media, as you know, there is no hierarchy. Uh, people connect with other people uh, of like and sometimes unlike minds uh, across these open and easily accessible networks. So that sea change, that, that revolution, has powerful implications on how we create organizational and social change with it, with, within something as large and as complex as the government of Canada. We do recognize that social media has a, uh, as a powerful way to engage in meaningful dialogue uh, is here. It can uh, mean better, more responsive government for our citizens. So the challenge is to find the right balance between what we want, which is more open communication and collaboration, uh, but in a system that has some centralizing tendencies that has to 
at the end of the day, create decisions and implement those decisions and the risks that are inherent in finding that right balance. Uh, previously, it would have been just legislate, uh, legislators and policy makers that would develop policy. But of course, with the advent of new media, of social media, we're moving towards a different reality in which Canadians are, can be, should be uh, more engaged and their views can be and should be more actively sought out. Uh, let me just give you one example. When I was at Industry Canada as minister, we, we held consultations on the digital economy strategy. That was in the spring of 2010. And we did, at the time, make uh, creative use of Web uh, 2.0 tools. We did that to gather stakeholder uh, views on the digital economy strategy discussion paper. We collected a creative new uh, policy ideas and solutions and we sought to engage the community to discuss and share suggestions for the strategy. I did the same thing uh, with respect to uh, what is now known as Bill C-11, which is the Copyright Modernization Bill. Same thing where we actively went out, had town halls, but at the same time simultaneously had uh, Twitter feeds that were plugged in. At the time that was revolutionary, but now it's, uh, it's par for the course. Of course, uh, when you have people working in new and different ways, there is a certain amount of risk. But in the hyper-connected environment in which we operate today, uh, I believe very strenuously the greatest risk is the status quo, is, is standing still. Uh, I would say that I'm not the only person saying this. Uh, our clerk of the Privy Council, Wayne Wooters, uh, a month before I launched the digital economy strategy, published an op-ed saying, uh, public service, we have to adopt Web 2.0 tools. I carried that same thought over when I became Treasury Board President, as, as Joe indicated. In November, I approved uh, new guidelines to uh, accomplish these goals of adopting these 2.0 tools within the public service. So we are moving ahead, blogs, wikis, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus, whatever. And the challenge is to make that uh, a natural and integral part of a modern, open, and collaborative workplace. So that brings me to my second point, uh, which is how we are uh, making better use of these social platforms. Obviously, uh, social media tools and services can allow uh, users within government to share information to engage in dialogue and collaborate in the creation of content, and those are some pretty powerful functions. They give us as well the additional means of interactive communication between our institutions, not only within the institutions, but between those institutions and Canadians uh, out in the public. Creating the modern day equivalent, of course, of town hall meetings, which can be used for various purposes. Uh, recruitment, uh, risk and emergency communications, obvious one. Service delivery and more information to the public. Uh, stakeholder outreach. And, uh, as I said, collaborative tools for consultation. In fact, as Joe uh, mentioned, uh, last December I held the first ever tweet chat by the Government of Canada on the topic of open government. Uh, when I tweeted about that, I got an angry tweet back from uh, a British Columbia minister who uh, claimed that it was her government that uh, had the first one. Well, I'm saying the first federal government. There might be provincial governments who've done this as well. Uh, but it was a great opportunity for me personally, as well as uh, for my department, to engage in that dialogue about open government and certainly was pleased with the number of people who were engaged uh, in that and, uh, and shared their views with us. Uh, in the course of just a couple of hours, we received more than 550 tweets in both official languages. Uh, I personally responded to a number of questions concerning really all aspects of open government. Uh, just to give you a, a little bit of a, a taste, uh, one, one question was, how will you measure open government progress in Canada? Great question, kind of hard to confine it to 140 characters, but at least we got the, the dialogue going. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the, uh, the tweet chat will be reflected in our final report on the open government consultations. Uh, once uh, we, uh, we are uh, finished with those and, and write it up. 
It was a great experience for everyone. Uh, we, uh, we were trending in the top five for Canada uh, at, uh, for a, at least a few nanoseconds anyway, uh, before Justin Bieber took his rightful crown again. Uh, but, uh, but generally, I just want to say it was a very a positive experience. I'd like to continue to make use of social media uh, to engage uh, government with Canadians. I've got some ideas not only about that, but about crowdsourcing, uh, which uh, I can certainly get into in more detail. Um, in addition to departments having social media presence, uh, we're looking at how better to ensure uh, consistent access uh, to these tools for our employees for both professional and personal networking. At the same time, as we're adopting these technologies, uh, of course, our employees are still our employees. They're still subject to uh, some uh, rules. Uh, concerning their use. Again, there's the, the challenge of the balance. As I, as I mentioned already, we recently issued a guidance to departments in the form of uh, the guideline on the external use of Web 2.0. And we've done this because there's no doubt that social media tools should and will become a communication staple to serve Canadians. I've said this many times. I was saying this uh, this, this morning to some of the people here that it makes no sense to me that uh, we could live in a world where you could be at the coffee shop first thing in the morning as a public sector employee, have your laptop open, having total access uh, to uh, wikis and uh, blogs and uh, social media tools, and then you shut your laptop up, you walk into your office uh, in the Government of Canada, and none of that is available to you. That, that simply cannot work. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not morale enhancing for the employee, nor does it help us do our jobs of being connected to Canadians. But one of the issues was there was no guidelines. And so uh, for public servants, in the absence of guidelines, the uh, reflex mechanism is to then do nothing. Uh, because uh, if there is an incident or an event, uh, then uh, they, uh, they would have nothing to fall back on to defend themselves. And I, and I get that. So. The, the guidelines are actually enhancing because it gives uh, public servants uh, the opportunity to know what's in or outside uh, of uh, acceptability in their workplace. Uh, of course, the guidelines are going to be different per department. We're asking each department to drill down on the guidelines. What uh, is acceptable at Department of National Defense might be slightly different than what's acceptable at Department of Aboriginal Affairs, just to pick two. Uh, so that kind of thing uh, adds to the granularity of what can be available. In addition, we've uh, recently um, uh, re, uh, revamped our values and ethics code for public servants. Uh, so uh, in terms of integrity, purpose and principle, uh, uh, values that are shared, uh, the, the guidelines are in place for that as well. So uh, I really do believe this is important. If, if government is going to continuously innovate, uh, if it's going to have a modern, well-equipped workplace that can attract and retain uh, innovative, creative employees. We really do have to go down this road, and we have to learn together, because uh, the thing about social media is, is that it is constantly evolving, and, uh, and we should recognize that. So uh, we are going to give the, uh, the, the employees the uh, resources they need to take advantage of these tools. And that brings me to my third point, uh, the opportunity in open government. Now, uh, of course, uh, that's the larger picture. Uh, open government, to me, is about uh, creating opportunities for people, citizens, to learn about and participate in government, and to allow citizens to use government data and information to bolster their businesses and to provide better services to Canadians. Uh, that's why this open government initiative was launched uh, pretty well a year ago now. And there are three streams that are being pursued within open government. First uh, is open dialogue, which uh, pushes to give Canadians a stronger say in government policies and priorities, uh, expanding citizen engagement, of course. Uh, a good example of that is the tweet chat that I, I just uh, talked about. Another example is, uh, is crowdsourcing and, and implementing that to a greater degree. Then there's the open data stream of open government, and that's about offering government data to Canadians, including the private sector and non-governmental organizations, in a usable uh, format 
so that it can be leveraged in uh, innovative and value-added ways for Canadians. A great example of this is uh, uh, Environment Canada supplying weather observations to the weather network, which helps the public uh, get useful information on the weather. As we know, Canadians never get enough information about the weather. So very popular app. Uh, another example is Represent Me, which is a website that uses postal codes to provide users with a listing of political representation at the municipal, provincial, and federal levels and to track recent activities. Uh, we are providing already a vast number of data sets through a single window. Uh, almost a year later, we've expanded this uh, project to over 6,000 new data sets from six government institutions. I just announced that last month. And so, so now we have over 271,000 data sets available from 17 organizations. So it really is uh, gathering steam and uh, will be uh, immeasurably helpful uh, to Canadians from across the country. Uh, just to give you some examples, some of the new uh, data sets that are available include uh, from Environment Canada, reports and charts on water and air quality, protected habitat indicators and municipal water and wastewater surveys, from Foreign Affairs and International Trade Canada, uh, international trade data uh, for uh, various products including uh, my notes here, it says poultry products, for those who are interested in poultry products. Health Canada, uh, data for licensed uh, nat natural health products. Industry Canada, national broadband coverage data, and the technical administrative frequency lists contain, containing data on radio si uh, system frequencies. StatsCan, uh, data from the Canadian Socioeconomic Information Management System database. And from my own department, Treasury Board Secretariat, uh, main estimates uh, tables giving information on the type of expenditures planned by departments, agencies, and crown corporations. If you just go to uh, data.gc.ca, uh, you will find uh, even more information there. The third stream is the open information stream, which is about proactively releasing information, including information on government activities to Canadians on an ongoing basis uh, by proactively Making, Canadian, making this government information available, it becomes accessible not only to the person who requested the information based on an access to information request, it makes it accessible to anyone who may be interested. Over 115 organizations are already posting summaries of completed access to information requests, and uh, the full list of these organizations is now available on our, on our open government site. So aside from the fact that it's interesting to see what people are looking for, from their government. Uh, posting the summaries means that people can informally request a copy of records that were released and receive them very quickly. So uh, that is uh, a summary of what open government means for us, but of course, open government is not just a Canadian phenomenon. It, it really is an international movement. That's why we've agreed uh, to move forward with uh, the United States and Brazil on something known as the International Open Government Partnership. Uh, this uh, partnership uh, aims to secure uh, concrete uh, commitments from other governments to promote transparency, uh, empower citizens, uh, and harness new technologies to strengthen governance. Uh, I can tell you that uh, our government, uh, Canada, uh, Government of Canada, is developing a, an action plan that will set forth its commitments for open government and uh, I, again, public consultation has been an important part of the development of the, of the plan and certainly appreciate any insights or suggestions on this file as well. The results of our comp uh, consultations will be published in a report in, next month in March, which we will then present at the International Conference on Open Government this April in Brazil. So as you can see, open government not only uh, allows us to be uh, more connected to and collaborate more with Canadians than ever before. As I say, it's also a global trend, and uh, I believe it's one that promises to propel innovation, uh, economic opportunity, and deeper democratic engagement worldwide. So in closing, let me just uh, leave you with this one final thought. Of course, uh, uh, Prime Minister was in Davos recently for the World Economic Forum. A lot of his commentary on old age security got a lot of uh, attention, but he said some other things as well. He said that uh, each nation, uh, certainly within our OECD or Western world, uh, has a choice to make. Uh, advanced nations in particular face a choice 
uh, whether to create the conditions for growth and prosperity or we risk long-term economic decline. Canada's choice, Prime Minister Harper said, will be uh, with clarity and urgency to seize and master our future, uh, to be a model of confidence, growth and prosperity in the 21st century. For me, that starts right now within government by taking advantage of the revolutionary leaps that uh, social media and open government can provide for a better future. And that's where I want the Government of Canada to, to go. And I believe with your collaboration and with millions of Canadians like, your, like yourselves, we can be part of a very exciting journey together. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to your questions.